Welcome to Oxpoon, the technical magazine with Wolfgang Rudolph. Hello and a warm welcome. Today is about vibration measuring instruments. Vibrations, how do you measure them? At first that's what I thought, but after a lot of consideration I thought that this theme is very very important. You know that maybe from your car, when you get new tires, then the wheels have to be balanced because when the tires are produced they get out of balance that means that they are not on every point the same thickness and then when you drive at a certain speed they start to jump and that means that the tires on certain spots wear then we know that vibrations cause damage or years ago the washing machine today are much better but years ago when they were spinning they had a little out of balance inside and it was only on one side of the drum it started to jump around and wandered through the house. It was very adventurous. We have springs and in car shock absorbers which these vibrations are caught from the springs and shock absorbers and then the shock absorber pushes more or less the vibrations back. It cushions these and we want in many areas no vibration. If we want to know how to get rid of them we have to know where they are created. So we have to be able to measure them and then try to find a remedy and then measure again. How it looks like when you have vibrations. I made on the drive to here today a few recordings from out of the car. And when you look here it goes a little downhill and I was dro driving a little too fast and then you can see sorts of bumping and a and as such, which comes from outside, from the road, not from the wheels or tyres, because they ensure that the car jumps around. You can see that clearly. And for this, the engineers have a challenge. How do I set my springs and shock absorbers to compensate for this? So that inside the car, not much of this is recognised so that we can drive comfortably, that is the one side, but on the other side there are areas where I want vibrations. I don't mean in the music on strings or so, but also in the technique. Imagine a vibration machine in the building industry where the worker, the surface flattens, it must shake and wobble. And there are also different resonances from the mass of the plate to the shaken creator so that they don't obstruct each other or it may not shake like it is meant to. Here you must measure so that the system can be optimized for less energy or fuel usage and to get as much compression as possible into the surface. But that was only a few examples. You will surely, when you go with the open eyes, see much more things in the world where it is about vibrations wanted or not wanted and how you can measure them that I want to show you now. First of all I have here the 3 axis vibration logger from PCA which is called the VD3. There you can see it. I have already attached it to my computer because it has a USB connection so that the data which is recorded can be transferred. So now we will look at the screen. I have already started the program. Here we can already see something. And when I do this and start a new recording, that's what I want to show you, then I can come a question of the sampling rate. That means how often a data set should be recorded. And as you can see, from 500 milliseconds to 60 seconds, and when I say then run by 500 milliseconds, so now it starts. A few lines appear and I will sit very still, and the lines stay more or less still. But when I knock on here now, you can see there is something happening. And when I knock from the side, the pattern is different. The red line is called on more, or here the grey one, and the pattern gets much bigger, very sensitive the device, 
it measures the smallest fluctuations, can also be used in free fall, and up to 10 Gs, up to 18 times the Earth's acceleration of the gravity. So you could give it to the NASA and it could fly with them and see how the flight was. So now while we have these recordings, when I stop it now, we can analyze them, make an FFT. So now we have stopped it. And this data I can also transfer to a spreadsheet and I can then format it how I want. The delivered software does a good job, simple to use, and I always have the possibility to make a setup where I can simply tell this data logger what it has to do. For example, here he wants the sample rate, and then I can record all three axes simultaneously, or not, just one. On this side it says motion detecting, and then I put in at how many Gs it should start to record. That means that it doesn't have to record every little movement, but we can say we have a minimum limit, and after this is exceeded, we start recording. So, and all of these things, let's shut that down. All of these things are clear and obvious, and you don't have to take the computer with you. This device works totally independently. It also has a protective cover for the USB interface. The battery is built in. It is inside fixed with screws. And there is a holder with it, where the data logger fits in. You can fit the holder with three screws, or by using the magnets on the back. They don't work at 18 Gs which is what the data logger can record. So now into here and screw tight. And tightly screwing is important because it should not wobble around or the results will be false. So and then I can somewhere on the wall hang screw or whatever next to machines running and all the movement of a device, a delivery of whatever record so very small, very powerful, and from the evaluation of the software, no problems. I think the VD3 is an ideal, nice device, which in every area where vibrations are, you can use. The vibration recorder, more said the vibration measuring device, VM3D from PCE, what I have here laid on a table, is a device which has an external sensor attached. There is a plug which I can remove and the display itself gives me the measured values. The actual measured values are those which are saved. And I just want to show you when I take this sensor, this external sensor here, and that's what it looks like, there are the directions on it, so that I know how to assemble it, as well as the assignment of the X, Y and Z axis. So now when I shake it and look at the measuring device, we can see on the display, first of all the cable is making a noise, we can see that the date is live, shown and naturally saved. I can later call up the data out of the memory and analyze them. I have different possibilities to change the units. It is not the case by all that I can turn from metric to the American measuring unit. Also I can switch from speed to distance and with the whole key you can stop the data. Volume here doesn't mean there is a radio built in, but I can attach earpieces and get everything acoustically, the data signaled as tones. So a very stable measuring device, which is universal usable, and with this external sensor, which you can secure to something, 
By the way, also with the delivered material, I can show you too. We have here a magnet. Here in the middle is a magnet. With which you can attach it somewhere. Or we have force transducers as ball or as pointer. If I want to measure something in a machine point exact. So everything is in a nice case. Then nothing is your measurement in the way. The PCVM5000, that is a massive device. When I want to grasp it with my hand, I can just get around it. It is thought for the tough usage, with a rubber casing and very large keys, which can be very easily operated. The display is good and easy to read off, even though at the moment there is nothing to see. Why that is? is because here at the top the sensors have to be put in first. Here I can attach four channels, not only three axes, but four maximal. We haven't got four, but I can be that I have in the X direction two measurements, and one in the Y and Z, or four in Y. I have here an adapter. It is plugged in here. It has on the end a BNC coupling. There the BNC cable to the sensor attached. Screwed. No, it isn't screwed. It is a bayonet attachment. And the second sensor I will plug next to it here. As you can see, it is already shown what is happening. This is the second sensor. This is down here. You can see the movement speed, something is shown there. The first one and of course both together. These sensors I can really attach or by using the magnet stick them on somewhere. But not first speed values because they would then fall off. I can also screw them apart here and put other heads onto them. So a universal device, what I can take everywhere and do everything with. I have also lots of setting possibilities, acceleration, speed distance measure. I also have the possibility to save it by hand. Or I put in a measurement interval. And then the values are recorded into the memory. And I can call them up later. Let them be displayed, and when I'm finished, I take out of the device, just turn it off, take the memory card out, which is on the side. There, that's where it is stuck in. Next to it, you can also see the RS232 interface. So, memory card out. I put it here into my computer. Then the window opens. I can see the file, as you can see, is an XLS. That is a table calculation. When we open it, we can see what the values have been recorded. Now I can do any further processing. All what that I want to measure or record. A stable large device, by the way there are 8 batteries inside. They last a long time and the device itself is held additionally on this stable case. And I have the possibility, the memory card, which is also delivered with it, it comes into this holder. So when I say I have a computer which does not have the possibility to read it, this adapter gives the possibility to use it over the USB interface. A handbook is also with it. That is, by the way, the cover side, which is on here. Then it is splash proof. Can't get it on properly. I'll do it in a minute. So, a vibration measuring device for four channels for the roof usage in outdoors. So at the end I would like to sum up what I have all looked at. 
First of all, we have here the VD3, a small universal powerful measuring device with which I can simultaneously record three axes and can handle a free fall and later being analyzed on a computer. And then we have here a proper measuring machine, a large stable device with large keys and with four channels. So I can maximal four channels connect memory on a memory card and can afterwards from the memory card to a computer transfer to analyze with the USB adapter or directly from the memory card and the last device, a measuring device from PC, the VM30 and that has an external sensor which I can attach somewhere there is a little magnet clip with it, two force transducers with it, a point and a ball for when I need to measure on a certain point. That can also record three channels and I can naturally the recorded data further process, see and analyze. So vibration measuring devices I hope it was interesting for you, for me it was, because I know now how important it is to measure vibrations. And goodbye.